Hello everyone and welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started here shortly, but for now, go ahead and kick back, relax, and we'll get started soon. You have been sleeping for too long. Good morning, Hawaii. You are the empress of my heart. Why don't you wake up, wake up? Hello everyone, welcome. For those who are just joining us, we'll go ahead and get start, uh, started shortly, but go ahead, kick back, relax, and we'll get started soon. everyone and welcome. Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending what time zone you are joining us from. We appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to stop by and learn a little bit more about our UH Monoa resources. So I'm super excited. Uh, we have Martin joining us from CTAR. Uh, so I want to go ahead and pass it off to Martin to go ahead and share with you guys more information about the resources here at Monoa. Hello and good day. <laughs> uh, this is Martin. Um, I'm one of <clears throat> three academic advisors with the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, one of the smaller colleges here at or within uh, UH Manoa. And so today's webinar is Building Your College Toolbox. Um, please keep in mind that we're a large university with a lot of different resources. So in no way, shape or form is this an exhaustive list. This is just some of the resources that are available to you. So the main point is you do not need to go through college alone. There are, there are support services that are built into the university to help you with your academic endeavors. So today's presentation is broken up into four main categories. Um, we have online resources, we have learning services, campus lifestyle, student careers and internships. So the first category um, is the online resources. And so I always like to tell students that, you know, one of the first things you should do is check out the online academic calendar um, to, see up, to see what the deadlines are and to mark those in your calendar now. Um, so that way you have it for future reference. Uh, some of the big updates are um, deadlines that are coming down the way. Um, well, the first one right around the corner is uh, registration. So registration for new incoming freshmen, for example, begins on May 28th at 9 o'clock a.m. And that's in Hawaii Standard Time. So that's very important. So if, you're, if you are watching this webinar from a different time zone, please remember that the times are all in HSD. So, so make the adjustments accordingly. Um, but your registration may vary the date. Uh, so the way that you would check what your specific date and time is, is to log into your STAR. Uh, we always recommend that you meet with an academic advisor so they can help you plan ahead of your registration. Um, okay, so the deadline to pay for your fall tuition for um, the 2021 school year is August 19th. And then the first day of class, so this is important students, the first day of class is August 23rd. Uh, the last day to register for courses or change your grading mode or to drop a class with a 100% tuition refund is August, 34, uh, August 31st, 5, 4 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And then you can click on this link or, well, you can't click on it, sorry, but you can go to the link below and all of these links will be provided to you 
um, after the webinar, but um, you can visit that site below and it will take you to the academic calendar on our registrar's website. So again, this is important, especially because it notes all of the holidays that are coming up um, that you know you can look forward to throughout the semester. And actually the whole, the whole um, academic year is posted. So for parents, it's good to note as well, if, if your student is joining us from out of state, if you have to make flight arrangements. Another site that I like or that I recommend students visit is the class availability site. Um, the reason for this is you are able to view courses within the last year. So right now, when you look into your star, you can kind of put together your schedule based off of courses that are offered in the fall. But if you go to the class availability list, you can see courses that have previously been offered um, in the past semester, as well as courses that are offered in the summer. Um, so that way it can, it can help you to build your future registration. You can see how many sections are available. And if you look on the far left side of this screenshot, um, you'll be able to see if your course has a designation um, for focus or general education requirement. But again, this is also available to you in, uh, in STAR as well. So as I said earlier, this presentation just is a few of the resources that we have to offer. Um, but you know, if there's something that I do not cover or if there is a resource that you needed um, that you, know, you couldn't find, Campus Help is a great resource. And so you can access Campus Help by phone or through their website. And you can ask them any questions or explain any issues that you're encountering, and they can help point you to the different campus resources that are available at UH Manoa. So this is uh, our campus map, and it's, it's a pretty easy um, URL to visit. So map.hawaii.edu slash Manoa. And this is pretty interactive. You can search for buildings, so it can help you navigate where your classes are on campus. You know, we're a fairly large campus. I've been here for years and, you know, honestly, I don't know where all the buildings are. Um, you know, I know where Starbucks is and, and you know, that's life, uh, but, you know, this, this will help. Another cool feature is when you register through STAR, there is a link available there um, by the class. It says map. So if you click on that, it will show you where on campus that class is located. Now, if you click on that and you receive an error message, one of the reasons why you may be receiving it as an error is because it's an online class. So if it's designated as an online class, it's not going to show up on a campus map. So things to be mindful. But when you're putting together your schedule, it's helpful to see where those classes are on campus to give yourself walking time, right? You don't want to stack classes that are on completely opposite ends of campus um, if, you, if you're going to be late every day for that, that second class. Another service that UH has is the Rainbow Shuttle. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, the shuttle services have been suspended for now. But as we look to reopen the campus, hopefully this will be one of the services uh, to join that. So if you live in close proximity to the university or if you're unable to find campus or parking on campus, um, you could park along the route and then um, you can hop on the shuttle for free if you're a UH Manoa student with a valid uh, UH Manoa ID. And then our Department of Public Safety has the Manoa Guardian app. Um, the Manoa Guardian app is one of the best ways to improve your personal safety by allowing easy communication with DPS and with others within your own safety network. So this app provides rapid and proactive communication with DPS friends and family. It also hosts other important UH Manoa phone numbers and emergency information. So through this app, you can set a safety timer to notify DPS or others, so you can choose like your friends or family to let them know that you are walking alone on campus or in an unfamiliar place. So for example, if you're at the north end of campus in a lab and it's, you know, eight o'clock at night and you're walking to the south end of campus to the parking lot, you know, you could say like, okay, I'm going to allow myself 15 minutes, set the timer, and then that way, you know, um, if anything happens along the way, um, and you know you don't make it there in that time, it'll notify uh, DPS or, or if you set it up to notify your friends it'll, or family, it'll do it that way as well. Uh, it provides easy emergency communication by calling or messaging our DPS office to report a crime or suspicious activity. Um, 
you can manage and message your guardians uh, important emergency information. So, you know, if the university has something going on, like if there's like a fire on campus or anything, uh, you, you will be notified through the app. Um, this app also includes direct phone numbers for campi campus safety escort and other important UH Manoa offices. Um, so, you know, back in, in my day, we used to say like program or, you know, the, the, the Department of Public Safety's number into your phone. But now through the Guardian app, it does that and so much more. But if you're from the old school and if you don't like apps, um, the, the number that you can call for our on-campus public safety is 808-956-6911. So again, that's 808-956-6911. Okay, so next uh, we'll be discussing different learning services available to students. Our largest uh, tutoring center is the Learning Assistance Center, and they offer free tutoring in, subject, in the subjects shown on the screen. Uh, so the LAC is located in Sinclair Library, and they currently offer virtual tutoring sessions for students. Their hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and they do offer sessions on the weekend, but those are by appointment only. There's also the Housing Success Center, and they're another tutoring service that's offered through the LAC, and they provide free tutoring services in math and science courses. Um, like the LAC, they provide online tutoring services due to the global pandemic, and they offer tutoring sessions one-on-one -on -one or in group settings. Uh, even though they're called the Housing Success Center, this is open to all students, so you do not need to be an on-campus resident to take advantage of this service. I think it's their name falls more in line with where they are located. Um, they are adjacent to the Hale Aloha cafeteria. We also have the Writing Center, and they are free for all students as well. Um, the Writing Center helps students with writing services such as essay consultation, resume help, and more. Um, so one of the things that the Writing Center will do is they provide one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one tutoring services. Um, they can help you research topics or understand writing prompts. Uh, the research part is critical because with greater or um, deeper research, it helps for better writing. Another thing too is, um, you know, I don't know how many of you are familiar, but in college, there are different types of citations that can be used. Like for example, there's MLA there versus APA or like AKA, no, I made that last one up, but there are different styles of citation and depending on the subject, uh, it would the determine what type of citation you should be using and they can help you decipher which one is best. Okay, we also have the Learning Emporium, which is a tutoring service provided by the College of Natural Sciences. It provides free tutoring for math, chemistry, information and computer sciences and physics. So there are courses, um, or these are the courses that are included in their tutoring services. So you can see that they are course specific. Now, I would, you know, say that at UH Manoa, we have the greatest faculty, um, not only in the state, but probably the universe, right? But one thing is some of our faculty tend to be of an older generation or a different generation. And so sometimes the information they relate to students may be lost in translation. And so a lot of the student or a lot of the tutors at these tutoring centers are undergraduate students or graduate students um, and, you know, so they're closer in age, age and they can help disseminate the information in sometimes easier to understand language that, you know, is more digestible. So I definitely recommend, like, if you're struggling in any subject or if you would like additional help, definitely visit one of the tutoring centers. There are other tutoring services available, not only uh, the ones posted, but like, for example, we have the Native Hawaiian Student Services, uh, and they help tutor students in Hawaiian language. So students who are currently enrolled in a Hawaiian language class are encouraged to use this. They offer free tutoring as well um, by appointment. And due to, to COVID right now, all tutoring sessions are limited to 30 minutes uh, through Zoom. There's the uh, Nagatani Academic Center and they provide support for um, exclusively for student athletes. So if you're an incoming student athlete, um, just know that this is another resource available to you. They provide programs and services like athletic and academic advising, orientations, tutoring, peer mentoring, travel letters, and more. They also have a computer lab, individual and group study rooms, and a study hall space available for student athletes. 
So due to COVID-19, the NAC is only open for students through appointment. So you can contact your athletic advisor if you are interested in using the Nagatani Academic Center. We have the Pre-Health Law and Advising Center, or PAC. Uh, they provide academic advising for students interested in health or law-related careers. So they provide academic planning during your time at UH Manoa, including a timeline of how to get into the school you want. So for example, medical school, law school, PA school, et cetera. They hold orientations and workshops for students. And the PAC also has textbooks and resources that students can use to help prepare for exams, such as the NCLEX, MCAT, and LSAT. So, <clears throat> you know, oftentimes these additional, you know, these professional schools have additional prerequisite courses that they want to see that their students have that go on top of what your major may require. And so seeing a PAC advisor is, is highly recommended so that they can help integrate that into your academic plan. So we also have TRIO Student Support Services, and they provide, um, they also provide advising and support for first generation students who display financial need. So they can help with things like filing your FAFSA, giving financial advice, looking for scholarships and applying for summer school scholarships. Okay, the next category is campus life and experiences. So the Student Life and Development is an organization that oversees chartered student organizations, student clubs, intramural and recreational sports, and puts on leadership courses, workshops, and activities. So some of the programs that SLD oversees include the new student orientation, student recreation services, student events, and campus life services. So one of the programs that SLD oversees is the chartered student organizations. So these five organizations are supported through UH Manoa's tuition, and they include the Associated Students of the University of Hawaii, so ASUH, um, and so where the executive officers and senators can advocate for the student body. We have the CCB, which is the Campus Center Board, um, and they are a 14-member board that governs programs and facilities and services at UH Manoa, including the Activities Council, where they plan and implement campus activities such as concerts, speakers, cultural and social activities, et cetera, and the rec board, which implements sports and physical fitness activities. Then there's the GSO, which is the graduate student organization, and they advocate for graduate students, not including the law and medicine students. There's the SAPFB, which is a student activity and program free board. They are an 11 member board advocating for the four vice chancellor of student affairs, and provides and allocates funding for club, clubs, events, and projects. Then there's the Student Media Board, um, and they, uh, they uh, review and revise policy and guidelines and provides management oversight for um, things like Kaleo, Kaleo o Hawaii, which is our campus newspaper, the Hawaii Review, which is the college literary journal magazine, KTUH, which is the student radio show, and UH Productions, where they produce videos and filmmaking projects. Then we have uh, the Registered Independent Organizations, also known as RIOs. Um, they are the clubs at UH Manoa, and there are over 200 RIOs that you can join, such as five, one of five Greek life clubs. We have business organizations, pre-professional clubs, honor societies, cultural clubs, language clubs, athletic clubs, and more. So definitely recommend um, all of you participate in clubs, especially as a new incoming student. It is a great way of making connections and making friends. Um, I myself joined a badminton club when I went to college, which was decades ago. But, you know, I had no idea what it was. It just sounded cool. It like I had a list. And I was like, that sounds awesome. Badminton, if you don't know, is like a ball attached to a feather and you hit it over a net. I wasn't very good at it, but it was still, it was still nice. I still made friends uh, through that club. Now, I recommend joining clubs early on because then it gives you the opportunity to, you know, establish yourself within that club and then eventually take leadership roles within it, which will help, you know, and it looks good on your resume or when you're at the time of applying to graduate schools. Now, we also have the Counseling and Student Development Center, or the CSDC, and they provide free counseling for students. They offer one-on-one -on -one counseling for up to 10 sessions per academic year and group counseling with no limit. So the CSDC also provides or also has living counselors at the student dorms. 
and they provide other services like peer fellows program workshops and testing services so you know the transition from you know to uh manoa is a lot for a lot of our students it's the first time uh living away from home and it is a stressful time uh, so if you need somebody to talk with you know these are trained professionals that are available to you and you can easily schedule appointment by visiting their website which is listed on this slide and again like the counseling um, that you receive is 100 percent confidential and has no bearing on your academic standing with the university we also have the women's center and it is found in the qlc or the queen lily okalani center it aims to provide academic support and success for women and LGBTQ plus students at UH Manoa. They provide special events, crisis and referral services, connecting individuals with on or off campus resources for partner violence, sexual assault, legal aid, and other emergency needs. They have, they have two lounges in a safe environment for students. The lounges are available for study groups, small meetings, and more. There is also a children's play area and a small library. We have the LGBTQ plus center, and they seek to maintain a safe and inclusive campus that is free from harassment or discrimination. They provide confidentiality to discuss or seek advocacy and support for mistreatment due to gender identity, gender expression, or sexual orientation. You can participate in direct services, weekly drop-in groups, or educational programs and events. The LGBTQ plus center also provides safe zone training for students, faculty, and staff, to educate others on LGBTQ plus equity and inclusion at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. We have the UHM Children's Center, and they are a preschool slash daycare center available to all UH Manoa students, faculty, and staff. It is located next to UH Lab School, and, which is across the street, and is licensed for up to 102 to five-year-olds enrolled in either full-time or part-time schedule. This location has six available classrooms with two teachers each. The UHMCC also worked uh, with the DOE to provide two satellite classrooms at Kuhio Elementary School and Noelani Elementary School. So if you are interested in the UHMCC services, you can find more information such as their rates and class schedules uh, by visiting the link below. And we have the University of Hawaii Health Services um, or sorry, the University Health Services at Manoa, our UHSM, uh, and they provide appointments to university students, staff, and faculty. They offer general medical clinics as well as specialty clinics, including dermatology, psychiatry, sports and medicine, um, and women, women's health appointments. They also offer immunizations, labs, pharmaceuticals, travel medicine, and health promotion program. So some of you may uh, have health clearance holds on your accounts. This is the department or office that you would submit your health clearances form to, uh, to have that removed. If you have any questions, I definitely recommend um, you contact them by visiting the, the link on this uh, website. So we have the Kakua program, and it is an equal opportunity program that supports students, our students with disabilities. Some services offered through Kokua include letters to faculty, exam accommodations, note-taking services, priority registration, sign language interpretation, classroom relocation, elevator use, mobility lab library assistance, and service assistance animal health. So they're a great resource for students that need accommodations. Uh, definitely recommend visiting them. And they will only disclose what is necessary to, to the um, to the faculty to ensure that you get those services that you need. Then there's the Office of Veteran Student Services, or OVSS, and they are committed to enhancing the veteran and military connected student experience, supporting academic success and providing services that assist in the transition from military service to higher education. So they offer veteran affairs registration through the Office of the Registrar and veterans integration to academic leadership or vital the, stu the student veteran lounge can be found in, at Saunders Hall. Okay, the next category is away experiences. And I know that's kind of strange because you're just coming to Manoa and it seems like we're trying to you know, encourage you to go away. But if you are thinking about studying abroad, um, the earlier you identify that with your academic advisor, the better it is because we can help build that into your academic plan. Um, one of the offices is the Manoa International Exchange Program, or MIX. 
um, and they provide international exchange opportunities for our students. One of the benefits of going or participating through the MIX program is that you only pay what you pay for at UH Manoa. And, then, and so what that means is if you're a resident, you, you pay your resident tuition through the university. So any financial aid or scholarships, that's also being applied. And you can participate in um, any of the partner locations listed on this slide. Um, one of the things about MIX to know is that all of the courses that you take abroad are counted as transfer credits. And so what that means is while the credits will come back um, to UH Manoa, the letter grades do not. And so it will have no impact on your Manoa cumulative GPA. Another study abroad opportunity is through the study abroad center. And so courses taken through the study abroad center are considered as UH Manoa credits and therefore are included in your UH Manoa GPA. They offer courses during the fall, spring, summer and throughout the year. Um, and so through the study abroad center, it's, a, it's slightly different because the tuition varies. So you would usually pay that program cost affiliated with that institution or host institution where you go abroad. Um, I know, for example, our fashion design and merchandising program, our major has a partnership with a university in Florence, Italy. And so we, we work with students early on to identify if they would like to, and then we build uh, their academic plan around that. But one of the benefits of participating in study abroad is that the courses um, that are offered at that university in, in Florence are not the same, type, same types of uh, fashion courses that we offer here at Manoa. So you're able to expand um, your, your knowledge by participating in this. So if you're interested in um, studying at a different university without having to travel too far from home, there is also the National Student Exchange Program or the NSE. And they offer opportunities to study at partner universities across the United States, Canada, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the US Virgin Islands. The NSE allows for students to take classes that are not available at UH Manoa, to study with new professors and experts in your field of study, pursue research, field studies, and internship opportunities in a new place, investigate graduate schools you may be interested in, and build new connections in a professional job market. Okay, and finally, the last category that we'll be discussing are student career opportunities available to UH Manoa students. And so we have the Manoa Career Center, or MCC, and they provide a variety of services to help students succeed in future careers, such as career counseling, help with writing a resume, CV cover letter. Um, they provide different career fairs throughout the year and workshops. They help with student employment and federal work study, providing information on internships, cooperative uh, learning, and help with test results uh, consultations. So a lot of their resources are available online. So you can already start to take advantage of this. Um, I know, you know, sometimes parents wonder like, what can you do with this major? They actually have a link labeled that. So if you're wondering what are possible careers given your, um, the program of study, uh, this is a great starting point for that. We also have Manoa Peer Advisors. It's another paid opportunity available through UH Manoa. MPAs provide support to students at UHM and act as role models and representatives of the university. So some colleges will use Manoa Peer Advisors to meet with you. Um, and so they can provide additional academic advising uh, for that. But if you were interested on becoming an MPA, it looks great on your resume because it is um, you know, a leadership role. And you can see the eligibility requirements on this screen. So other on-campus on job opportunities or even off-campus job opportunities can be found through a site called Seeky. Um, well, I call it Seeky. I found out that some of our students call it Seek, but because you're hearing this presentation from me, we'll just call it Seeky. Uh, students can search for jobs among all 10 UH campuses. So again, the UH school system is a 10 campus system. So as a UH student, you are, you are qualified or eligible to have a position across the various campuses. I would recommend searching at UH Manoa first, but at least keeping your search narrowed down to on-island campuses, right? If you have, um, you know, if you're looking at a student position that's on the island of Maui, that may be problematic uh, for the commute. Um, so for parents, I know that many of you are concerned, um, you know, and you want your, your student to focus on their academics while here. 
But interestingly enough, a lot of studies have shown that students that participate um, in on-campus positions tend to, to do better. And one of the reasons for that is because they're on campus longer and they're more familiar with the campus resources that are available to them. Now on the flip side of that, students may be looking at that and seeing like, you know, a student assistant pays 1165 and you may be thinking, what, like I make 18 bucks working for Papa John's right now. Well, one of the differences, um, you know, you're a student worker. I know it's a student comes first. And so oftentimes after you register for your classes, you would give your supervisor your, your, your um, class schedule and we'll plan around that. We'll make the accommodations, right? Also during different periods throughout the semester, like around midterms or like if you have papers due or finals, you can work with your, your supervisor here um, and they'll make the accommodations because our priority is your academic success. Whereas with Papa John, you know, Papa's priority is getting his pizzas out, right? He doesn't care about that paper that you have to stay out late to do. So again, you know, just prioritizing what's important to you at this stage, right? Like, do you want to do well in your academics or is it important that you make, you know, slightly more money up front now? Okay, so internships are a big component. Many intern or many majors here require students to complete internships during their last semester of their degree. But there are also other internship opportunities offered through the university. So some internships include congressional and legislative internships through the College of Social Sciences, leadership development programs through our college CTAR, or medical internships such as the Cancer Research Center. So internships are a great way of gaining experience um, before you graduate, right? So it's applying what you've learned in class to the real world. So we definitely recommend that you do an internship, um, even if it's not required for your specific major. Okay. Lastly, UH Manoa now offers a free online new student advising workshop to help students prepare for registration. You will be able to complete the workshop at your own pace and go through a variety of short virtual modules, as well as viewing step-by-step -step video tutorials to help you with the registration process. So if you want to enroll in the online workshop, please see the link below and sign up using your at hawaii.edu email account. Um, this is, if you haven't already started the online workshop, it is live now, so you can definitely start. I highly recommend it. In fact, our college, um, you know, acknowledges it so much that it's mandatory for our students. So if you are a future CTAR student, just know that you will have to complete this. Um, and it, it helps all students, um, you know, prepare and it, it'll help with your future advising appointments. Just being familiar with STAR um, and sites like La Lima or the different uh, placement exams. Okay, so UH Manoa, oh. So there's also uh, this Warrior Webinar Summer Series. So you can go, uh, I'll let Amber talk about this. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. I was like, take it. <laughs> right, but yeah, so we've got a lot of really great Warrior Webinar Summer Series uh, planned for this upcoming summer. I know you guys have had a lot of amazing questions about how to pay for tuition and the different health clearances and what do you need for student housing? How do you prepare for that and what to bring? And then also, of course, the big question is, what are some things you need to know when moving to Manoa? Uh, some things that you may not think about, like having your own bank account if you're moving from the mainland. We don't offer any mainland banks here in Hawaii. We only have local branches. So we'll definitely be sure to cover all of that if there's any parents in the current session right now. Uh, we do have some excellent warrior parent uh, Q and A's that we'll be hosting and that will have uh, our representatives from each of the different departments available to speak with. So definitely be sure to check, um, continue to keep a lookout on those emails those Hawaii, at your hawaii.edu email. We'll keep sending out reminders and definitely make sure to attend. We'll also make sure to record them as well. So for those students who will be, um, who have questions about the recordings, all of these recordings can be found on YouTube. Uh, for today's link, so, uh, we will make sure to go ahead and include that in the description as well. And so uh, just let you guys know the Warrior Parent Q&A, it will be financial aid, housing, and the admissions reps will be there for that day. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and go into a uh, Q&A. Uh, we have about 20, 25 minutes or so. So definitely.
Hopefully students, I know you guys have been asking a lot of great questions, so be sure to go ahead and keep putting those questions into the Q&A. We'll try to get to all of those that we can. And so I know, Martin, for today, we definitely have talked about so many amazing resources. There is just really so many different ones. One of the biggest things that students, if you guys are feeling overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, that was so much information. Please note that you don't have to memorize these. It's nothing like that. We're just trying to show you that there are so many people here at Monoa who are going to be there to support you and your academic journey throughout the either the four years or two years, depending on what type of student you are. So please do not worry. All of these links are available, of course, on our website, and there's plenty of people to help guide you through your journey here at Monoa. So Martin, kind of just taking it back to some of the basic questions, I'm gonna, uh, students, just so you guys know, we're gonna go by different topics uh, that when, uh, not by order asked. So one of the big questions we get uh, pretty frequently is how can we schedule with an appointment with an academic advisor, especially with advising uh, registration coming up? Oh, very, very good question. So one thing, once you set for your UH um, email account or your UH account, you should have access to STAR. Through STAR, you can book an appointment through what's called STAR Balance. And I believe for students, it's on the right-hand side of your screen once you log into your, your STAR account. Um, and it makes it very easy to book. Um, so you can go through that site um, and then it'll usually pull up who your advisors are and what their availability is. And then you can just choose a time slot that works for you. Uh, you know, pro tip, just remember that all appointments that you book are in Hawaii standard time. So, you know, please, please factor that in uh, at the time that you're making those appointments. Um, another way is um, there's the Manoa advising guide. So if you're unsure of what college you belong to or who your academic advisor are, is, um, I know a link to the Manoa advising guide will be provided after the webinar and you can use that to find who your advisor is through that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And students, just so you know, um, I know this took me a while to get adjusted to too, but here in Hawaii, we do not have daylight savings time. That is not a thing for us. So right now, I know, for example, California students, uh, we are about three hours away from you, our three hour time difference. East Coast students, I believe it's six hours currently right now. Uh, but come when you guys do the time change, it we don't. So then it'll switch to two hours and three hours or two hours and five hours at that time. So parents especially keep that in mind if your student is, especially when calling your students in the morning, keep that in mind that sometimes it may be an hour earlier than you think it is there. So, <laughs> or an hour, and students keep that in mind for your parents. You don't wanna be calling them at 1, 2 a.m. because you're gonna freak them out and they're gonna think something is wrong when you just call them and say hi. So <laughs> just things to keep in mind in general. Um, but some other good things, uh, a student asked, what is the maximum amount of credits that they can register for? That is an excellent question. And so technically, the maximum amount of credits that you can register for is 19 credits. And so the way that UH Manoa works is that um, once you're full-time enrolled, so once you have at least 12 credits, then we cap the tuition. So anything that you take on top of that, it, there's no additional charge for those classes. Um, and then, you know, up to 19 credits. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend taking more than that um, just because, it, you know, it, it can become stressful, um, especially when you look at the academic, like when you line up your syllabus, uh, you'll see that like, midterms all line up together or finals all line up together. So, you know, I would work with your academic advisor to, to come up with a plan that makes sense where you can spread those credits out. A lot of the majors or the majority of majors here at UH Manoa require 120 credits uh, to graduate within, you know, an eight semester or four year time frame. That being said, not all credits are created the same. And so, for example, a lot of our students like in animal sciences, for example, are, you know, pursuing one of our science degrees. They may start, you may start off with 14 credits and you might be like, well, then I'm already behind, but that's not true. Um, because with that, we're, we're planning that you take general chemistry and lab and, you know, intro to biology and lab. And so, you know, the lecture is three credits, but the lab is only one credit. And so it looks like it's an easier class because on paper it's one credit, but we know that those labs take up a lot of time. 
like biology 171 lab, for example, is writing intensive. So you do have a lot of writing um, assignments with that one credit class. And so, you know, at, when during your advising appointment, we'll help to explain everything that you can expect. So I wouldn't get hung up on the number of credits that you're taking per semester because it's easily, you know, it's easy to take less or more in, in future terms. Yeah, I definitely could not agree more. Like, I know, I know I've definitely seen some very ambitious incoming students who are like, I'm going to take 21 units. And I'm like, what? Please don't do that to yourself. <laughs> um, trust me, we, we want you guys to, of course, get your degree, get it done as quickly as possible, but have some fun. We're all about, we want you to have the college experience. You know, of course, you're paying for the academics, but you're also paying for the experience. So keep that in mind. Right. And, you know, yeah, a lot a lot of students are in a rush or not a lot, but there are students that are in, are in a rush. Right. And they're, they're trying to accelerate their degree like to three and a half years or three years. And, but I'm like, why? You know, on the flip side of that, like, you know, your college experience is so short compared to the next chapter, like working in the in the industry or in your field. That's going to be many, like decades, decades. So you know, take your time, you know, I'm sure parents are like, no, 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 hurry up, get up. But, you know, at the same time, like, do so in a way that you're actually enjoying your classes, right, because you want to build these experiences. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you'll definitely, some people say that the high school is the best four years of your life, but I, I, be, I beg to differ. I think it's really college, depending, as long as you get involved, have some fun. Um, kind of jumping back to more about the academics. Uh, so I know a lot of students have had questions about placement exams. Um, if students, for example, today uh, still haven't taken the placement exams, but have their registration coming up, say, ex for example, May 28th, uh, what's the best recommendation you have for them? That's a great question. And it depends on what placement exam they're planning to take. So if it's like the chemistry placement exam, that's a free uh, placement exam that's offered through La Lima. So if you go to the chemistry placement exam website, they actually have like a step-by-step -step guide on how to, how to access your La Lima and how to access the test. And you can do so like today, if you're ready to do so. And usually like it takes a few days at most for the chemistry department to update the system with your test results. Um, and the chemistry, well, and there's another, there's a whole webinar dedicated to placement exams. So I'm just giving you like the, the abbreviated notes on this but you know so there there is still time to to take it right and some courses um do require a placement exam before you register so you know like if i wouldn't let not taking the placement exam stall what you can register for and what i mean by that is like the math placement exam for example Right now, due to COVID-19, it's only being, it's not, it's not being offered in person. It's, it's through a third party company called ProctorU. Um, and so I know that, you know, it can, it can delay the time that we get your test results into the system. So, you know, take the math placement exam when you're ready and you can, but, you know, meet with your academic advisor and we'll tell you, okay, well, at least you can register for English, you know, you can register for social science or other gen ed courses. And then when your test scores come in, then we can register for the appropriate level of math or chemistry uh, that, that you qualify for. Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks for explaining more about that. So I know, of course, another really big question is how can students change their major? I know with us at admissions, uh, we had a deadline uh, that you could contact us by May 1st to change your major. But now we're kind of in that weird gray territory. So what's your best recommendation for students inquiring? Oh, good question. So. Um, it depends on what that major is and if they have additional um, steps to do it so. But at the very least, what I would recommend doing is scheduling an advising appointment with that college. And so, okay, so this is where it gets a little tricky because, you know, I, I, you know, I first talked about booking an appointment through Star Balance, um, but through your, going through your Star account and, um, but balance will only show you your advisors under your current major that you've been admitted to. And so if you are interested in transferring to one of CTAR's nine majors, um, then, then we wouldn't show up on your Star Balance account. So that's when you would use the Manoa Advising Guide to, figure, to see how you can book an appointment with us. Because we also have a landing page on our website that you can book a balance or book 
an appointment using that link instead. So it's like a direct, it's like a, a workaround way to doing it. Yeah, perfect. So students, I also went ahead and put a link in the chat. Uh, when you go to that link, you guys can just do command F or control F depending on your style of computer. I know it's a little bit different. Um, but just make sure to do that. Type in the major you're interested in studying and then uh, go ahead and book an appointment with those with the new majors academic advisors. I know several of the departments uh, don't really restrict too much. So say if you're biology, but then all of a sudden you want to change to communications, you can still register for the prereqs and such uh, for certain majors. So don't stress too much about that at this time. Right. Um, yeah, and, and again, like don't feel like overwhelmed and that you have to know what your major is before you start. You know, you can always change your program, right? And so don't think you have to know what your end goal is or what you want to do for the rest of your life because that's going to change. And that's that's kind of why general education classes or gen ed courses are built into all majors here at UH Manoa because you're going to discover different subjects that you may not have had access to before. And so your interests can change, right? And so it is common that students will change their major and so don't, don't feel like you have to do it before you start or you have to start in the, you know, once you're locked in, you're locked in. No, you can, you can always make adjustments. And that's why, you know, there are advisors. So even if you're like on the fence about, you know, joining one of our nine majors um, in CTAR, you can definitely meet with one of us and we'll, we'll, you know, before committing. So you don't have to like be in a rush to change. Like before committing, we'll go over the program, explain what it has to offer. And then, then you can kind of see if it's, if it's a good fit. Um, another, another service that we have <laughs> that was not included in the presentation uh, is the Manoa Advising Center. And so, you know, they help students that are what we call exploratory. Are there, you know, that's kind of our undecided um, category for students. And then this way, you can kind of take, you know, a group of subjects that you're interested in to see if that kind of starts to point you in a direction or a major that you would like to pursue. Yeah, and that's the thing is, Students, you guys may think, I know um, one of my, one of our student ambassadors, she told me when she came in, she's like, I'm going to be pre-med. There's no exemption. This is what I'm going to do. And I was like, all right, awesome. She started taking her biology classes and she's like, no, this is not for me. Never mind. And I was like, all right, cool. So what do you want to be? And she's like, I'm going to go exploratory now. And so she went exploratory for her first year. And now she just told me, she's at the end of her sophomore year. She officially now has declared uh, creative media I believe a business as well uh, in marketing and then a minor in Japanese. And I was like, wow, that's a completely different uh, pathway, but I'm so, so excited for her. <laughs> so not CTAR. Okay. Not CTAR. Sorry. So, about, so, not something time. in here just broke, but you know, that's, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, next time, next time. <laughs> yeah. So students like seriously, that's what, like what Martin was saying, that's what the general eds are for. Do not stress. You do not need to know. I personally changed my major three times. So you want to have those, that time to really kind of experience things and figure it out for yourself. So don't, don't stress about it. And so kind of changing a little bit of it to a different pathway is I know that there was a lot of different questions about getting involved and student clubs, which is super exciting. I love all the excitement. I know uh, this past year, a lot of our clubs were not listed on uh, the RAO's website just because with COVID, a lot of students didn't re-register their club for this year just because they knew they couldn't. There were types of clubs that had to physically meet in person and they knew with the state regulations they couldn't meet in person. So definitely you, there's a lot of clubs that aren't showing on that list. I looked at it the other day, but do not worry. There's still so many more clubs available, especially this year as we are starting to introduce students back to the campus and welcome them back you're gonna see the campus really come back to life so much more than it has been the past year. We're so excited. It's been a very long, long time during COVID. I'm sure you all feel the same way. But of course, if you guys do wanna start your own club, you guys are more than encouraged to. We love when students start new clubs. It's so exciting. Basically, all you have to do is uh, get a few different friends. I think it's like between five to six people or so. And then also get a uh, staff uh, member to go ahead and sponsor you or to sign off on it. And there's a form that you'll need to fill out and turn in. And then you guys will be officially a club. So definitely if you have really cool, fun, unique ideas, especially I know there's a lot of students on our Accepted Student Discord and Facebook page, you know, definitely be sure to start connecting. And uh, Students, I know there's been questions about esports. We do have esports that's very much available. They, they got jerseys and everything this year. They're so excited. Yeah, they just had a tournament too. 
yeah. Oh, I heard we did really well. I was like, okay, this is good. <laughs> See, you know, you know, students, when I was growing up, you know, my parents said, there's no money in video games, right? You think, but what did they know? You know, I could have been the next ninja. They ruined it. Right, exactly. Now you're like, I could have been an athlete. Who knew? <laughs> but, you know, and then that, that just goes to show, right? Like, you know, a lot, it's okay to not know, like, what job you're looking for, or what your future profession is. You know, I think by having a solid education, um, you're, you know, a lot of you will have jobs that don't even exist yet, right? And so our goal as a university is to give you the skills that you can continue learning on your own as well and be fluid and flexible with the market. Yeah, it's constantly changing, especially now with COVID. There are so many more unique jobs that I don't think 15 months ago we would have thought would have been jobs and here they are. So you never know what may happen in the world. I definitely, flexibility is key for sure. So um, some other things to think about with the clubs and such is we are going to, I know typically at the beginning of each school year, they do an involvement fair or a club involvement fair where you'll see Greek life come out. You'll see the different clubs come out. I'm not sure how exactly they will do something like that for this fall, but definitely be sure to keep an eye out for it as well as check your emails. I know there's a lot of clubs that are still willing to meet virtually as well. So the I, from what I've heard is there will be in-person options as well as, you know, virtual options. So just keep an eye out for that. Now, kind of transitioning to more, I saw some students that have some questions about uh, transportation. So I know that's a big question and how you uh, mentioned the rainbow shuttle, which is amazing. I love the rainbow shuttle. Students, if, even if you're not a big fan of buses, I, we promise you during some of the months that are a little bit warmer, especially say August, end of August, first week of school, it gets a little toasty sometimes. So take advantage of that air conditioning on the bus. You'll be very grateful on, on certain days. Right. And, um, yeah, and, and the U-Pass is included with your student fees. So you can catch the city bus, you know, for free. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So students, just so you guys know, uh, there is the city bus called the bus that is entirely free for students that has been up and running even during COVID. So you guys can definitely take advantage of that. Um, our rainbow shuttle bus is the one that goes directly around the campus and as well as one to two miles off campus. So that is the one that has been uh, taking a break for the past year due to COVID. Wasn't as many students on campus, so there wasn't really a reason to run it. However, um, I know we've, Martin was kind of saying, and I, we, we've heard rumors going around, of course, uh, that they're now that everyone's returning back to campus, we're hoping that that'll start, be started back up again. But for sure, for getting around the island, uh, the bus, uh, which you can view all the time schedules on both the app as well as on, you know, Google Maps, Apple Maps, transit apps, all of those are available on there. And so uh, for the, oh yeah, questions about the bus is, with the bus, uh, basically at the beginning, once you have your student ID uh, in the fall semester is beginning and you've already paid your tuition and all of that, you will be able to pick up a sticker that will say fall 2021 bus pass. And then you'll just go ahead and uh, get that sticker and then just go ahead and show that on the bus every time you go to ride the bus. And then um, Martin, fun fact, I don't know if you know the, this answer, but I, if you don't, I got you. Um, a student is asking, can a freshman uh, assigned to a dorm also have a car on campus? <laughs> I think I got you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I want to say yes if you can get a parking pass, but I'm not entirely sure, so. Uh, you're good, you're good. Uh, so it's basically, uh, the way they do parking passes is it is going to be based on number of units. So basically seniors will get first access, then juniors and sophomores. Freshmen, uh, we apologize that you guys are the newest on campus, so uh, they are gonna be a higher priority for those who have off-campus jobs and have, you know, internships so that way they can have a car to go to those internships. So freshmen, I don't, my recommendation is don't plan on having a car on campus. It's very, very unlikely. Being honest, especially for those coming from the continental US, please do not ship your car. I did that. It is very expensive. It costed $1,500 just from California. It took over six weeks. It was a nightmare. Gas prices are going up right now. I saw in California, it's like 425 right now. I was like, oh no, <laughs> so bad. Just do yourself a favor, use the bus pass. Our bus system is extremely safe. Uh, everyone feels really good doing it. We have a Bicky, a Bicky bike uh, bike share program that you can use as well. Uh, you do have to pay for it. 
but it's super cheap. It's like 13 bucks a month for unlimited rides. And you can always purchase say 200 minutes at once as well. So plenty of different options to get around both the campus as well as the island. Right. Yeah. And, you know, like 1500 bucks to ship your car, that's not including gas, you know, to maintain it or, you know, insurance. Um, so one thing, you know, that's a lot of Uber rides. <laughs> so you, you could just save that money and just, you know, use Uber if you need to. But oftentimes, especially if you're living in on-campus housing, you're going to make friends and, and somebody most likely will have access to a car or transportation. And they're probably going to the same places that you're interested in. So that, I don't think that'll be an issue. And, and where our campus is located, we are at the center of all the fun stuff. So everything is relatively close and quick to, to Manoa. Yeah, it's really convenient. We're a half mile from Waikiki, about three miles from downtown Honolulu. Uh, you can easily take, honestly, I feel like bike riding is so much faster than even the bus because it's just like right downhill. It's like not even 10 minutes on a bike to get to the beach. So uh, if you have a car, you have to worry about parking. It is a city. so. Every time I know I personally drive to Waikiki or to town, I get so stressed out because I'm like, oh no, where am I going to park? What parking structures are open during COVID? How much is this going to cost me? It's usually between $10 to $20 to park my car in town. And it's just a pain. Every single time I'm like, I should have biked. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> so students, just keep, keep that in mind. Um, you'll definitely make some friends when taking the bus too. That's really, I feel like, where a lot of friendships are established. <laughs> So we have like just a few minutes left. I know we've had some really good questions about uh, health clearances and where to send transcripts to. Uh, so definitely be sure to check those answers that we have answered in the Q&A. But for the health clearances, we will be hosting that Warrior webinar coming up soon with more information on that. Um, but just be sure to go ahead and check your new Warrior checklist to be able to review it, to review uh, the website, the student health uh, website, the Student Health Services website will have all the information you need for it as well. And then also, uh, Martin, do you mind kind of explaining? I know there's been some confusion for the incoming students with registering for classes. Is Are they currently just registering for a, the fall semester or is their classes going to be for the entire year? Oh, good question. So yeah, so you can register for summer and for fall, but not for the spring yet so yeah we do it by semester usually um yeah and then because you never know right and so one thing like when you meet with an academic advisor now before you even start what we'll do is we'll we'll go over the program we'll talk about what the program requirements are and then we'll use star your gps registration page to kind of to kind of map out where your classes go based on when they're offered and when their prereqs are uh, the sequencing of prerequisite requirements but just know that's that's just a plan. And you know, I've never met with an uh, incoming student and we've stuck to that exact you know, plan through, throughout their four years here. And so it is easily changeable or flexible um, uh, with that. So we recommend that you meet with an advisor at least you know, before you register for the next semester so you can make the adjustments for that. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, I'm sure students are like, wait, I heard about this class. This sounds awesome. I want to try it out. And you're like, all right, let's rearrange it, fix it up, you know. And all uh, those awesome classes are in CTAR. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Lots of awesome classes across the, uh, across the, the disciplines here. Yeah, absolutely. This is a really great question that just came up that says, if you miss your registration appointment time and date, are you still able to register at a later time? Yes. And so this is why going to that academic calendar back on like slide three or two, you know, <laughs> it, it, it'll, it tells you when your last date to register is. However, just know that a lot of students are the, you know, the majority of incoming freshmen, they're all able to register on May 28th at 9 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. And so right now, if you look at the class availability list, you're going to see a lot of sections open. But come 9 a.m. on the 28th, like all of those are just going to, it's, it's on a first come first serve basis. So I definitely recommend going, logging into your start today, putting it in your calendar when your exact registration uh, date and time is so that you're good to go. And remember, it's in Hawaii Standard Time. <laughs> I love it. So just students, just a couple last reminders, of course, for you all is, yeah, definitely make sure everything is in 
like under time it'll take some time to adjust to local students you've got it easy you know what time you're in time zone you're in um also some other reminders is if you guys haven't started checking your hawaii.edu email on a regular basis uh please do so i personally have my email on my phone so if that's the way the best way for you to check your email by all means it is part of google so you can technically download it to your gmail app or whatever uh service you prefer, prefer of course and then uh, just some other reminders is definitely when you contact anybody, especially the academic advisors, financial aid departments and such. And now at this point, even admissions, uh, we do prefer uh, for you to use your hawaii.edu email. Just that way we can use that for verification. Um, sometimes we still have students emailing us at the G uh, their own personal emails, which is for us for admissions, we don't mind, but for the academic advisors, they will ask for that, uh, for you to email them on the hawaii.edu email. But yeah, we want to say thank you all so much for joining us, taking time out of your morning, afternoon, or evening. And of course, thank you so much for Martin for joining us, sharing so many amazing different resources here at Manoa and different ways to support our students. As uh, students, we'll definitely see you all at the next Warrior webinar uh, coming up in June. But if, if you guys have other questions, of course, in the meantime, be sure to contact us at any of the departments, and then we'll send you guys an email with the link to the YouTube recording. We hope you guys have such a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon. Aloha. Bye.